All right, want to do a quick video about why I built my base in the Black Forest this time, despite having recommended people never do so in the past. The secret is the nice little dotted white line down there, which explains how far the workbench despawning and while building radius goes. In Hilda's Quest, they added a very common and honestly created a long time ago mod feature that is, every time you upgrade the level of a crafting bench, the radius increases, and that includes despawning. Yes. So, this radius going all the way around this tiny black forest strip that I found and build up on means that all of this area will be despawned, and that is absolutely perfect because this little strip, I got lucky with this, wholly surrounded by water, deep enough to where a lot of enemies, let's say from raids, will be slowed down and I can pick them off with bow and arrow. Uh, I've done a lot of fun stuff heading to the only spot where they could come from with at gear. And then also enemies coming swimming slowly across the water I've taken out with the stag baker or just sledge cheese. I set up some simple core wood spikes over here and this is going to be for when I kill the elder eventually and I have troll raids. This is going to be very, very convenient at just slowing them down for a moment or forcing them into the water where I can then just pick them off with fine wood bow headshots with my flint arrows. It's going to be super, super easy to just defend this area with minimal investments and I can leave this building looking super aesthetic, which, well, yeah, this is aesthetic for me. I'm getting there as a builder. Anyway. What's super cool about this is that even though I know that raids are coming, they're only coming from areas that will disadvantage them or that I can extremely easily reinforce. Now because of that, this black forest, even though the meadows can't be raided by they sought you out, the seekers, and the black forest can, I'll be more than ready for them. Seekers swim, but pretty slowly, and that makes them 1.5 times weak to frost and lightning, which, well, I'll have plenty of frost arrows by then, and I'll be picking them off just fine. Same thing with the horde is attacking. I'm not really worried about that, even though you can get raided, of course, in the meadows as well with that raid. It'll be really good just to have all of this water here and one simple area that I can protect on land. It is going to be extremely simple. And if you find a similar type of generation in the Black Forest, I highly recommend you to make this a your your base home. Now, what makes mine extra exceptional, not only is there a whole bunch of uh, Black Forest nearby, which is really good for my bronze grind. Check out all these mats that I've had, even though I'm done with the Bronze Age. All of my mist lands and later bronze and copper shenanigans will be covered conveniently. I don't have to go way far. It's been super convenient even just with my carve. But that's not all. I have even more delightful areas around here. Merchant. Uh, Gregorf Nest Farming. I'm avoiding the obvious swamp crypts that are going to be so easy to sail to and from. Get all of my smelting done. But I think the glorious thing about having this strip like this is that I can sail from the middle of here, this little ocean stretch, back straight to my smelting area and get all of the ore in immediately. Not only that, but I can pull my serpents eventually over here and get them on land really, really simply ready to be destroyed, ready for me to grab all the trophies, meat, scales, specifically the trophies and the scales as they sink. So yeah, this little stretch right next to ocean, right next to swamp, all surrounded by water and black forest. Truly phenomenal for building. And that increased workbench radius really does make the difference in raids. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you can find a similar sort of uh, generation, build on it. I don't care if it's in the black forest. Uh, it could be in, even in like the plains. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be so easy to defend from like you're being hunted by the time you get that set up. Like, still, this is a really good starting base and home base, so you're probably not going to find it in the plains. 
But yeah, Black Forest or Meadows, if you find a strip like this, build it 100%. And if you can get all the bonuses of what I have here with the swamp and everything, even better. Uh, I will have the seed linked in the uh, pinned comment and in the description. So you guys can have some fun with yourselves if you just like this location or if you're having trouble finding it. I will also try to find seeds where uh, this sort of location is similar and also with good progression. And I'll make a, a, another seed video soon. Oh, I'm, I'm getting raided! Perfect! Perfect! Let's go! Oh my god, this couldn't be even better. Oh, uh, let's go, okay. So I'm going to lure them away into the only area where they can be, and let's add gear. Yep. And now I'm going to drag them over to this rock. You can see they're swimming, so they're taking a long time to get here. And this is when I'm going to start pelting arrows. It's gonna be a really good way to get your bow skill up. I don't really care for these mats. I have a gray dwarf nest right near a troll cave entrance with a portal in it yeah look at that this is so convenient oh you guys throwing rocks that's cute i'm slinging arrows now that they're very close check this oh convenience on a different level oh shaman you poor thing you poor poor thing i think it's ai is bugged out oh well can always build more stake walls or corewood uh, corewood stake, whatever they are. I haven't used them until now. That's how interesting this uh, structure is and how Hilda's Quest has enabled it to be so good. Oh, it's just so cheesy. Look at that. I mean, th this type of raid defense, even an, a non-combatant could do this. It's so simple. If you think you just want to build and you want to build on a server that might have raids on it find something like this to build on it's just so so convenient oh yeah like what what are they going to do what are they going to do forces moving are they really look at how slow they are oh you're going to de-aggro not on my watch oh come on there we go sneak attack get the snipe there's another guy over there. Boom, he's done. Ah, oh, that is so much fun. Oh, we got one more. He's done. Oh, a couple more. He's done. He's done. <laughs> okay, now let's check out the stuff over here. I should have enough wood. Yeah, I have enough wood. I can uh, build a workbench if I need to. Yeah, it looks like there's some damage to these. Oh, here's the shaman. Okay, let's just give him a couple of pokes. And now let's set up the workbench proper. See if I can't repair some goods. Uh huh. Real simple. Just go over whatever you need to. The angle of these make these super easy to just jump over. Even if you got low jump levels, just jump a little bit early than you think, and you'll be good. Yep, just repairing all of these. Now the cool thing is, I haven't repaired all of these. I haven't repaired any of these so far until this moment. So even though they are fully submerged in water and they've been rained on, whatever, they're not taking damage. And I assume that's because they're technically angled pieces. And a lot of angled pieces in Valheim count as roof pieces, which means they won't take any weather damage. And these certainly haven't taken any weather damage. I don't think that you'll be able to use these as roof pieces uh, I think people would have tried that already would be a neat aesthetic not as cool as a moss roof I wish we had those but again I'm starting to ramble you guys have just seen proof of how cool the defense is on this space and yeah thank you Hilda's quest for making this possible go find yourself some nice isthmuses again see it in the description and in the pinned comment below and I'll find some more thanks for watching I'll see you guys some other time bye